To get rid of those pesky ads, request stories, listen to unlisted and bonus episodes, and to chat with the gang, support us by clicking the description link. Welcome to the Talk Murder Me podcast. This is our live stream. We do this every Saturday, even though I know it's Sunday at this point. We do this every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So moving forward, that's when we'll be doing this. You can find our podcast on any platform, any podcasting platform. And if you like this, if you like true crime, check out our sister podcast, Among the Dirt and Trees. It's a true crime that occurs out in nature, so a lot of camping stuff, and it's really, really good, and she's killing it right now. Anyway, tonight we're also doing trivia for our supporters and for anyone else. For If you're not a supporter of us, no worries, you can still win some Amazon gift cards, but if you are, I got some cool true crime prizes, and I got some more coming in. We just got this this uh, rare comic book here. It's pretty nice. Ooh, Mr. At, Monster's True Crime. Look at the the cop with his eyes. It's like Inspector. <laughs> it's giving me Inspector Gadget vibes. So this is pretty cool right here. Stuff like this. We also got a bunch of other stuff. You can find on the link below, talkmore.com slash trivia. We got a lovely, lovely story tonight. I was going to do the Leonard Lake story. I'm going to do that next week. It's a long story, and I don't want to just put some something together i'm in the middle of researching it and it's it's also like a 500 page book i'm reading so with that it takes a while but i got some great stories two great stories tonight they'll both be out next week tuesday and thursday probably on any podcasting app if you like this story you can stay for the next one and just go to patreon.com slash talk murder become a supremo and those live chats and live streams are more one-on-one and we get to talk to you guys and and be more of us you know unlike the public where we're all mature and shit but this episode (laughs) are we though (laughs) this episode is effing nuts effing nuts that's all i gotta say it is crazy i think this was requested by darren Ooh. but just before we get started i want you to think well i want everyone to answer out there has anyone now this might sound kind of crazy but has anyone had rough sex before because that is what this episode is about and if you have, just think about it. What? I don't, it's, I'm trying to get the uh, audience like, participation here. Well, Fuck. I mean, <laughs> okay. it's, a, it's a no for me, but I mean, it's kind of uncomfortable, like in the room, like, should I like block my eyes and ears for you guys oh, so shit. you can answer honestly? Or like, cause I don't know, like, I don't know if, you know. And if you have, send all the details in the live chat, (laughs) (laughs) our photos too. (laughs) I like to feel like I just like woke up from the conversation (laughs) where you're just like, yes, we're going to be discussing. So this story is going to be, is it rough sex or murder? And the next story is pretty crazy too. We're actually going to be talking. Those are the only two options, rough sex or murder? Yeah, rough sex or murder. Next story, I'm going to talk about a death by glory hole. (laughs) (laughs) So... If you're new here, this is a uh, well, good thing I already went to church this morning via YouTube. <laughs> uh, oh so let's God. take the shot. Let's get this thing rolling. All right. Well, before we do, I think we got to. Um, yes, I know we got a couple of these last week from the Taco Supremo, but our newest member is Mickey DeMouse. Ooh, what's up, Mickey DeMouse? Mickey DeMouse. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you on uh on Patreon. And so today we have a surprise shot request for Martin. I for believe Martin. you are on here, Martin. And this is a specific request. Martin, thank you for giving me several options to select from. Nice. So Martin. I, I picked this one. He is not gonna let us down. No, he's maybe. Not. I don't know <laughs> if we're gonna like it, but you know, it had a really cool name, so I went with it. Okie dokie. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. A lot of people on here today. That's oh awesome. Oh my God. Make yourself known, guys. We're, uh, I mean, I know we're famous and rich, but. Oh, please. <laughs> are we? <laughs> I, Jen and I missed that part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cheers, y'all. All right. Cheers, Martin. Cheers, Martin. Mm. Pretty good. <sighs> Ooh. Ooh, that actually was pretty good. Martin's from, where's Martin from again? Texas. Texas. They drink that in Texas? What is that? 
That was called the Alice in Wonderland shot. <laughs> and it had it something was, in there that I didn't like. I don't remember what like it was. like orange? Yeah, it tasted It was orange. orange liqueur and tequila topped. Nice. Well, we are going to be doing a story about tequila tonight. Oh, what, are we? What type of tequila? Um, I did Jose. Damn it. Uh, if it was 1800. Actually, the, the orange liqueur was 1800. Nice. That pairs perfect with the story, Martin. You killed it. Also, if that gave the story away to anyone that knows this story, do not spoil it because these girls don't know the story and this one is effing insane. So last week we talked about Phoebe Hanzuck and that was a murder or accident. So I wanted to kind of go on with that theme today and it's a completely different story, but this is more of a, is it murder or is it rough sex? So if you guys know, yes, yes, Natasha, we will be showing the two girls one cup. No. <laughs> no. You'll never eat ice cream again. Nope. Nope. Don't ruin ice cream for me. I will fucking end you if you ruin ice cream for well, it's me. It's just soft serve. I'm nope. Yeah. I had ice cream last night, but it's part of my treat meal. It was really good. All right. So when you guys figure out what the story of this is, if you do, do not spoil it because the way I got it set up is, you know, is why that this is the best fucking podcast out there. I mean, fuck <laughs> we're going to sunrise florida what could what bad could happen in sunrise florida <laughs> tonight we're going to 11630 northwest 128 drive 308 sunrise florida 33323 apartment 308 wow that's a lot of threes good lord man we're starting with 911 call i'm gonna play it in its entirety it's only two minutes so two minutes is a long time well jen think about it jen you're getting paid so you know whatever 911, what is your emergency? Hello? Fucking hurry up, man. My girlfriend's fucking in the bathroom. She's in the bathroom. I mean, I look at my girlfriend. She's in the bathroom. Come on. Okay. All right, maybe we'll stop it there. <laughs> I think that's enough. <laughs> I, I couldn't really understand what yeah. he was saying. All right. like something about the some someone was in the bathroom. It's what I pretty so much my what I got. my girlfriend's in the bathroom. She's not breathing. That's basically what what that nine one call is. <laughs> so I will put that nine one call on talkmore.com though for you guys. I know I've been bad about posting episodes on there, but you know. All right, so we're going tonight. This is and let me know in the live chat when you guys know what story this is. If you know what story this is but don't spoil it we're going to 3 39 a.m september 20th 2015 this is sunday we we hours we hours sunday morning sunday morning we hours gotcha and this is at an apartment building we're going to tonight the colonnade residencies of 1600 block northwest 128 drive and sunrise all right we have a a man screaming on the phone to the 911 operator saying something to the effect of my girlfriend's in the bathroom she's not breathing and he is just completely hysterical so something definitely went wrong now this is the the girlfriend and the boyfriend so this is the killer and the or killer i should say killer this may be a rough sex case but this is the maybe <laughs> this is the caller and his girlfriend oh i did okay. the caller well, I, he he's... seemed older in his phone call did he... you th picture that as well Dan? yeah i uh, this is i i almost don't want to say it because i don't want to sound like insensitive what I pictured him as, but I, thought, I pictured older. I pictured him like Apu from The Simpsons. <laughs> I don't know who that character is. I don't, I've never seen The Simpsons. Quickie Mart. Welcome to the Quickie Mart. <laughs> <laughs> never seen it you never seen the simpsons no we've talked about this so yeah well this should be a point of therapy because you have to watch the simpsons <sighs> it's just not not something i've watched mm, um, trash i love trash <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's what? not an adult cartoon that we are venturing to well, watch what can does I he call you garbage goober you have a phd okay can <laughs> i just can i interject real quick for like just 10 seconds maybe. No, let's go. I keep going. All right, sorry, Jen. Go ahead. So yesterday I signed up for my for a free trial of Apple TV because I came free three months free for my, my, for my, with my TV. And there's a cartoon called Central Park on there, which is by the same animators as Bob's Burgers. Ooh. And it has a bunch of famous people in it. Um, but I don't know if you guys would like it because it's mu it has music, musical. So you guys well, probably Bob's Burgers like has music in it. Oh, so we don't yeah. like music now. That's, that's you don't nice. Like 
musicals. Yeah. No, I don't like musicals. But Bob's Burgers does sometimes have music. So and if it you is can, well done. if you can find it, I'm sure we. Well, we have the uh, jailbroken the, yeah. fire stick thing. Three thirty nine a.m. September 20th, 2015. You heard that nine one one call coming in. She's not breathing. Police show up at that apartment complex. If you ever lived in an apartment complex, thin walls. So neighbors yeah. are hearing this. Mm. this. Were they hearing the other thing? What other things? The sex. She's not breathing. Police show up and they find this man and his name. And this is, I've never heard anyone's name other than the obvious name person of this. But his name is Fidel Lopez. So, yeah. Fidel, like Fidel Castro. Castro? Yeah. He and I I share a birthday. Is he dead yet? Did he die? He did die. Yes. Yeah. He died of uh, natural causes. I don't know if he did or not. Did we kill him? It was a couple years ago, right? Yeah, I think he died. That was actually one of Shram's trivia questions. What is Jen's birthday? So if y'all want to just go ahead and enter that in now. Sorry, I keep ruining the trivia questions unintentionally. April, March. Shut up. You know it. Yeah, I do. Oh, didn't it just happen? It just happened. Yeah, because you had wanted me to sign something. Just keep going. All right. The the cops. Your comments do not affect me anymore. The police get there and Lopez is shaking the body, trying to wake up his girlfriend laying there and she is in the bathroom she's actually positioned between the toilet and the bath shower combination so she's you know that little crevice between the toilet and the bath type of thing yeah Yeah. she is right there passed out and obviously dead so she's actually lying on her back inside the doorway her head is facing outwards into the the hallway So with this episode, I want you guys to answer the question and I want you guys to come up with your own conclusion at the end. Is this a case of rough sex or is this intentionally murder? All right. I have questions. Okay. Can I start the story first? (laughs) And also think about, so if it is murder, if this is murder during sex, what would someone have to say or do during sex to have it escalate to murder? Harder. Choke me, daddy. Why do I know these things? Okay. <laughs> I think you should actually have sex before you answer these questions. <laughs> Probably so. Jesus. So I will I will retract my answers. You need to have a safe word. That's all I know. All right. Shramarama, yeah, daddy. All right, daughter. Let's get it on. Ew. Stop. Stop. I, I view you guys as my daughters. No, you don't. Just please move on. I don't want to have this conversation again. I will say I'm glad I didn't tell my mom that I was we were recording today because she has been tuning into some of the lives. And like, Oh, God. Yeah, I'm really glad. <laughs> I'm actually text somebody right quick. Stop it. Can you please move on? All right, we got to get this going. All right, so is this a case of rough sex? This is what I want you to think about tonight. Is this rough sex that led to an accidental death? Because actually I looked it up. I was, uh, you know, I typed in rough sex. And yep. then when I saw those images, I, I decided to redefine my search to <laughs> to how many people <laughs> die of rough sex. Were you were you doing a, an, an image search or a video search? Because you could have just gone to like Pornhub or Reddit. Well, Pornhub's search engines kind of, uh, I mean, it's all right. Anyway, let's right. move on. So the thing about this is a lot of people die from rough sex. A lot more <laughs> than you think. It's but it's not like how much like what's give me some statistics. More than here. one. It was like sixty nine out of a thousand. <laughs> Literally that was a statistic. I was like, what? <laughs> That's ironic. Wait, <laughs> what do you mean? Percent. Like sixty nine percent of people it's, die from no, like, sixty nine well, out of a right, thousand, so, so it would be six point oh, nine percent. I thought ninety nine percent of the deaths are cardiac arrest. Right. Oh, okay. So like so. people older than are are out of shape than they should be doing so. rough sex. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the relationship before we go any further on the crime scene or or anything else. So, as I said, these these are the the victim and the decedent. Can you describe him and her for our podcast? I mean, they're young. I would say they're in their, like, 20s 20s or or early 30s. Yeah. Does he look like a cold-hearted killer? Um, I mean, his... This photo he looks like a tough guy i would say but it's also a mugshot you know yeah so yeah that's true fidel lopez and his girlfriend maria nemeth and i'm pretty sure she is peruvian as Hmm. we'll talk about in a little bit they were in a relationship together for one year and two months okay they've actually moved around several times to different locations, different apartments. They lived in Hollywood Beach, which sounds really glamorous until you Google Google Earth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the the wrong Hollywood. <laughs> 
it's like those and nothing wrong with this but it's like those trailer park that is like forest acres oh my God. trailer park <laughs> you know <laughs> luxury trailer okay so they were in a relationship a little over a year they lived several different places they used to go to clubs when they first met in fact lopez met maria at a club oh it was actually outside the club from from what i i saw she was inside the club and she was drinking and then she left the club and he was like maybe he was in there before i'm guessing but he was in his car and he was basically like yo you know what's up type of thing right that's how they met and they seem to seem to bond pretty good you know but i know it's only been a year but at the time they were buying furniture for their new apartment and their apartment is actually pretty nice it's a pretty pretty large apartment a little bit about this guy 25 years old and he has two children but they're by a different mother okay. so the two children two boys both under two years old at the time of his arrest the time of this number one call and neither of the mothers were maria no n- no by different no not maria so he, there's two other women that he had children with but not maria yes correct okay. two other children that he had yeah because they've only been in a relationship for a year and a half and, right. the, and the kids are two years old so got it just simple math here <laughs> Maria, she actually worked at that complex. She was the assistant manager there and she she likes to drink, but she's a lot smaller. Her body's a lot smaller than Lopez, so she cannot hold her liquor. Um. And the sauce that they like to drink together was tequila. Especially, how do you say it? 1800 or? Yeah, 1800. 1800. Mm-hmm. 1800 tequila is what they. Are you asking for what the Spanish in, uh, translation of 1800 would be? Yeah, Jen, go ahead. No, I don't have it. I was just asking if that's oh. what you were saying. How do you say it? Let's talk about the day of the death here. And like I said, the whole time, let's ask yourself. Rough sex or murder. Rough sex or murder throughout the day. Let's actually see what happened. The day begins at the mother's house. They actually drive to Miami where Fidel's mother lives. And that's not too far from from, from Hollywood, correct? I don't think it's far from Hollywood. No, it's it's uh, under an hour. Yeah. Well, they well from Hollywood. I don't know, but they were living in Sunrise. Oh, got they were it. living in Sunrise, Florida. The day of the death begins around five o'clock. That's when she gets out of work. She was actually, and this is a Saturday, so she gets out of work. She works at the apartment complex. She wasn't supposed to go in that day, but she went in to take care of a few things. She leaves around five and meets up with Fidel, and he's already been at home home from from work he's not working on saturday and they decide to go to his mother's house in miami and then they go to chili's together if you haven't been to chili's if you don't know what that is because i think that's i'm pretty sure that's a southeastern thing no it's nationwide oh is it okay chili's baby Baby back back ribs ribs, barbecue sauce barbecue sauce (laughs) so they go to chili's they have two margaritas each and then they leave from the mill. They stop by the gas station and they buy 1,800 tequila and condoms. Oh, okay. Now, I wonder how they they had two margaritas each. I wonder which ones they had. My favorite is the Tropical Sunrise one that they have. So good. Mm. All right. So this is, this is in the apartment you see here. Is that like their coffee table? Yeah, That's kind of. I mean, they, they just moved into this apartment. That's kind of like, like I was using my move-in bins when I didn't have furniture. There yeah, this is what you still use, right? For tables and stuff. So this is... I don't know. You wouldn't know since you haven't been there so long. Well, I've been sick. So I've been sick. Mm. For six months? <laughs> They just moved into this apartment. They're on furniture, but they're building their relationship. So what you see here is limes, obviously for the tequila. And about half the bottle of tequila, 1800 was gone. So between the both of them, plus two margaritas and several beers. So they get back to their apartment and they they have they have sex eventually. Now, before this, before this rough sex death incident, the only thing that they've done that was kinky was 69. And all, all this information and what I'm going to say comes verbatim from the arrest report and his own words in his interrogation video, which I definitely urge you guys to watch. It's three and a half hours, but I, I feel like the detectives do a, a, an amazing job in it. And it is, I mean, it's the good cop, bad cop kind of scenario. And it's it's a it's a good interrogation. So, okay. And so we're going to, are we going to watch some of the video? I'll show you a little bit. 
But I mean, yeah. is if you're gonna watch one, I definitely w- would watch that one, and it's not that long either. Okay. I mean, some of these interrogation videos are like twelve hours. Fucking hours. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and which I gotta give credit to the investigators, like to be able to. I mean, I know it's their part of their job that you have to do, but to stay in it for that long. Mm-hmm. All right. So, quote: She started getting, and he's got a very thick accent. Fidel's got a very thick accent. Mm-hmm. He does. Very thick. Where is he from originally? I, I'm pretty sure he's Cuban, but he's got very. Very thick accent. Okay. Extremely thick. You know, they got rid of the Cuban restaurant that was... He oh, says, sad. he says, quote, she started getting crazy. She she asked me to, 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 to do things with the arm, you know? That was actually pretty good. It was. I'm proud of you. The detectives ask, well, you know, what sort of stuff? Where we're at now, 911 call comes in. Mm-hmm. They take Lopez, who was shaking the body. Baby, wake up, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. The detective's like, can you come in and answer a few questions? He says, yes. Now he's in the interrogation room with two detectives. They're trying to get the truth out of him. And this is where we're going. So he says, she started acting crazy, asking me to do things with the arm, you know. So they're talking about sex right now. The detectives ask, well, what sort of stuff? I want you to put put beer bottle in my pussy. And so. As and, for, she, and so it like all of a sudden just started like this. Yes. They were both extremely drunk. Where we're at now, rough sex, beer bottle in her vagina is what she asked for. Okay, keep in mind, the the only thing they've done prior to this was 69. Okay. I want you to, and she says, I want to put beer bottle in in my pussy. Is that a thing? I don't feel like that would be comfortable. I don't know. Can't answer. No you can comment. Put this can in there if you want. Are no this, comment. Go this, on. Move forward. Are this Just sick stop. arcade that no one's oh fucking talked about? Keep right. going. I'm proud of you for building that. He says that he felt very uncomfortable because he's never done anything like this with anyone before, and they've been dating for a year. She's never asked anything like this before. But he says, "I'm her man, so I I do whatever, whatever she asked." The beer bottle goes inside. He takes it out. Then she says, "Put put your arm in my pussy." Everything she told me to do i do that's what his words were in the interrogation i put my i put my arm in her pussy i put my dick in her pussy when he started doing the thing with his arm so his arm i'm talking about fist right in there that's when she said she needs to go to the bathroom because she feels like she needs to throw up she says she has to vomit she goes to the bathroom the story is now he goes in there to the bathroom he splashes water on her face and then realizes she's not breathing so at this point she's sh- he's shaking her baby don't do this to me what do- what's going on and then he calls 911 I mean maybe he ruptures something you know during rough sex he's still good right did anyone say they know this story yet I don't, I don't think, think so. so holy shit man all right well, this gets a little uh, intense, so. Oh, we're not at the intense part. Okay. He, <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. This is more one of those family-friendly stories. Uh-huh. <laughs> So he tries at that point to give her CPR. Baby, don't do this to me. And then he starts screaming, help, help, help. He calls 911 and then the police get there. All right. The detectives say, well, okay, all right. Rough sex. She she was asking for it. She was extremely intoxicated. You were extremely intoxicated drinking tequila. We get it. We get it. But tell us about the, tell us about the screaming and the, the broken everything in the apartment. Hmm. Okay. Because we interviewed the neighbors and they said, they said, quote, it sounded like construction was going on. Construction. All right. So explain that. Now the neighbors hear a male voice screaming and this was a period of two hours before the 911 call was placed. Two Uh hours before they hear a male screaming. They do not hear a female voice. The apartment was wrecked. This is the apartment here. You see, this is a broken pane of glass. Ooh. Okay. So this is the sliding patio door oh and i'm gonna show you some more s- stuff here in a minute but there was no female voice this was hours before the 911 call so around 11 p.m well okay uh, you know i i got angry well what were you talking what did she say what made you angry and again i want to ask the question for you guys to think about what would she have to say what would she have to do during sex if this is a homicide to enrage someone enough to kill all right but at this point she says she wants to go back to Peru with her mother. Well, it doesn't mean that she necessarily said something to provoke him. Like he could have had that planned all along. Uh, n- no, he can. This is based off a, a direct confession from him. Something happened. If it's a murder where, where he. OK, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying like it. Do- he could just be saying that. 
what if he what if he planned to kill her this manner the entire like it was a uh, premeditated I mean it could have been premeditated especially if you can use this as a as a default yeah uh, jail free card well you guys can decide if he needs to go to jail or not okay there was no female voices now this was hours before the 911 call and she says that they were making love or he says that they were making love and then she mentions that she wants to go to Peru she wants to be with her mother in Peru. This angered him because he can't go to Peru. He has two children, which are not in the picture at this point. They're with the mother. He has two kids, both under two two years old, and he has a full-time job. He's actually using her car to get to his job. He cannot go to Peru. He's been at this job for years, and he's not just going to uplift his life and go to Peru. But she seems to be dead set on going to Peru. There's holes all in the apartment wall. The computer is broken. Her computer is in in slivers broken and, and just completely just trashed. Glass everywhere, computer glass, keys, keyboards, computer chips all over the place. He says, quote, when one thing it is breaks, then everything else is is going going to breaks. What he says. I mean. All right, sir. So. Fidel, like, tell me, what's your story here? What the, what happened? I know you're drunk. I know you can't remember hardly anything, but what happened? All right. We were having sex. She ends up in the closet of the the bedroom closet. She was doggy style. And she started saying, can you put this inside of me? Can you put your arm inside of me? All this stuff. And then she goes to the bathroom because she has to throw up. I go check on her. She says, get out of here. I go smoke a cigarette on the patio. I come back and she's not breathing. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. All right. Mr. Lopez. Well, what about the the blood that was in the apartment? All right. There's some blood in the apartment. Now, this is a, a picture. I'm going to show you some pictures. So Ooh. here's a bloody door. That's a lot of blood. That's yeah. not even just like a little. So what about this blood here? Because I'm seeing I'm seeing blood spots. The medical examiner seeing blood spots here. You see these these blood splatters here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of blood. Yeah. I'm seeing this blood here and and this is in the closet here. You can kind of see it. it's been wiped up, but there it is right there. Mm. So I'm seeing this blood here, you know, okay, if it's rough sex then, you know, what's that about? Well, she's she's bled before when we had sex. She's got hepatitis B is what she told me. And I didn't look it up, but I feel like hepatitis B is not necessarily a bleeding disorder. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I think I don't think I mean, I think hemophilia is like a bleeding disorder, but I don't mm-hmm. know about hepatitis B. I know it's a blood disorder but, uh, or it's just as a isn't hep, hepatitis. Isn't that um, I have no idea. Isn't that the one you get vaccinated for? Do and the one that you can like catch things from a needle prick? I don't yes. think it's a neat. I don't think. I, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't, I don't think know. it's a bleeding disorder. Somebody though. here knows. I'm sure. I know there's a couple of medical people on here. Mr. Lopez, did you? Th- this is a better. Uh, this is a better photo here of the uh, blood here. You can see it's a lot of blood. What do you think, Jen? And that's not like where. How is she? How is that getting on a door frame in that case? <laughs> it's not like that's not from well, here's, intercourse. You have to tell me something broke. Like that could be from the glass. Someone cut something, but that's not from the intercourse itself. No way, w- Mr. Lopez. Did you notice any blood? Okay, you stuck a beer bottle up there. That's that. Could could that could pose problems it could cut something did you notice any blood when you pulled it out yes i did it was all over my hands but i washed my hands to go smoke a cigarette that's why my hands aren't bloody now so he says the following that there was blood from her pussy and i said baby what what you want me to do she said i want you to put your arm in me oh, I so feel she like- is still want so she's still wanting more and harder rough sex even after she's bleeding i i feel like if that is blood from coming from her vagina it has to be she had to have been on her period mm. because that's like a lot of blood but what do mm-hmm, i know mm-hmm. this is coming from someone but who also how know. is it on how is it like it, how is it in those places right in unless it was on his hand right <clears throat> and he was just like Cut this off. now where we're at now is she was in the closet she said she wanted she was doggy style she wanted a beer bottle inside of her she wanted her she wanted his arm inside of her and as he told detectives he takes his arm up to the elbow and it's just like in and out even with the bit beer bottle in and out as hard as he can the whole time he's saying baby are you sure and she's saying it's not hurting did the autopsy reflect 
that <clears throat> the autopsy is not available. I've, I looked for hours to find it. Were were they able to confirm in some way, shape, or form that? that type of damage was done to her body internally because that is not like that would show in an in an autopsy report if like something that large w- went in her. Yeah, those are really good questions. Giant. But for this story, just hold on. OK. All right, Mr. Lopez, there's blood. There's blood in the closet. She was bleeding. There's blood on the on the, the doorway. You said that she was bleeding and then she moved herself. She walked to the bathroom. So she basically left the bedroom, walked down the hall by the kitchen and into the bathroom. And there's probably what? A little bit of blood bleeding out from her there during the walk, you would think. Okay. Well, it, it was more than a little bit of blood, Mr. Lopez. This was actually <gasps> uh, what we found here. Holy smokes. Um, no. Also, Darren says that this was not his request. <laughs> <laughs> You would just like to make that clear. Who the fuck <laughs> Natasha requested this shit? Who requested this one? They're not fucking saying it because they fucking know. Um, yeah, that's How? a lot of blood. <laughs> I mean, it, po- yeah, yeah. Nay, nay, nay. Mm-mm. Did that come out of her as she was walking to the bathroom? Um, I mean, like, no, no, uh, not just from her vagina. Like there would have like yeah. if she was walking to the bathroom. She must have had wounds all over. Like she maybe she was like stumbling to the bathroom because she was hurt. But like, it looks like she fell. All right. So where are you guys? It's just too much blood. Where are you guys at now? Um, I'm saying murder. I am also saying murder. Darren says this story is too tame for him. <laughs> <laughs> it, all right, Darren, here we go. Let's let's bump it up a little bit. The detectives come back in and this is this is something they do in in a lot of interrogations. And they want to see I the picture this. again. Yeah. I, it, and is the mop bucket the c- crime scene investigators or, w- yeah. or were they, was he ready to clean up? No, it's the crime scene. OK, OK. Crime like, why did they put little cards there? <laughs> like, to show the their pictures. pictures. No, I get it, but look, I mean, is Splatter. that is number two like that entire fucking thing? That's that's where they take the. That's like for evidence piece. No, to, I I get that, but look how much it is. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's it's like more, coagulated in pieces. They like, don't need a number for there. It's just like look at the picture. I know. Well, but, would you like to go speak it, to on it, how to reform it does, evidence picture taking because it, you could do that. It does look like someone it like dragged o- across the floor all right all right or so like maybe a pet rolled you, around in it you guys are at murder so what would she what would she, what happened like did she say something did she do something he's never done this before other than 69 now he's putting a beer bottle in there he's putting his fist in there and maybe there wasn't a safe word the, I see this a lot in the interrogation videos, and I love this. He was going to say something else. I'm like, see, you have a lot where. I see this a lot in the interrogation videos, and I love this. The detectives leave. They come back 30 minutes later, and they always say this one thing. All right, we have a problem. I love that. They That is a tactic they do in literally every interrogation. All right, we have a problem here. I just got off the phone with the medical examiner, and I just seen some pictures, some photos. I just, we want to clarify this so we don't, so you don't look bad this was rough sex it got out of hand she was really drunk even though she was bleeding she kept wanting it she goes to the bathroom you're not to blame but we have a problem the medical examiner sent me sent these photos in there were severe injuries multiple injuries from the arrest report quote there were also appeared to be several chunks of blood and tissue on the floor inside the closet Uh now is there's no there's no knife in in the closet the beer bottle is not broken there's a flat iron which was also used and there's also a coat hanger hook that was also used there's no knife there's no nothing only those things the medical examiner says quote her insides are ripped out her guts are in the closet her intestines are in the closet she is in the bathroom her intestines small large and stomach are out of her body there are no holes there are no slashes there's no no cuts to pull this stuff out of. There's only one direction, one hole that they've could have came out of, and that is her vagina. So did he like stick his hand way too far up, grabbed on and pulled out? Is that what happened? 
He says it's rough sex. Flat iron was used. A coat hanger was used. The, the detective says, quote, at some point, the stuff inside of her came out. The tissue was in the closet, her, her bodily tissue inside, her stomach, her intestines, her organs, her in innards were outards in the closet, yet she is in the bathroom. So, so go, did go he back. say that he, did he admit to using a hanger? So go back to this. Well, Jesus Christ, yeah, all of This makes more sense now, all this blood in this apartment. She doesn't have a stomach and intestines anymore because they're on the closet floor. These are drag marks. She dead. You didn't splash water on your on her face and ask her if she's okay and she feels like she's going to vomit. She no longer has guts. They have been pulled out of her vagina and anus. That's the only holes they could have come out of. There are no other holes. Sorry, Darren, this is too tame for you, bro. There is what appeared to be large and several chunks of blood tissue on the floor inside the closet. He says that she walked to the bathroom, but eventually he recants that and says, you know, I may have I may have drug her in there. I may have. I may have drugged her in there. So where are we at? We, we have no knives. The bottle is not broken. The coat hanger may have been used, but he's well, not how sure. How else would he have pulled? Like, how else would that right, her innards have come out of? her quote part of her insides from inside oh, her Jesus body Jesus Christ part of her insides uh, from inside her body are on the floor you put your arm inside of her vagina to her elbow correct yes D and the detective says this during the interrogation did you do this he's pumping his arm back and forth now think about it your elbow is on the lips of the vagina that's how far you are up there did you ever when you were doing that did you did you ever grab something and oh my god pull it out this is making me never ever want to have sex like i just may re remain a virgin forever all right, and, so you know, I, at this point, I'm okay with that. I kind of buried the lead. This is obviously not rough sex. This is fucking, <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anyone's still like, uh, maybe, <laughs> right? You guys aren't still like on rough sex, are you? Um, no, I think we have all <laughs> moved past. I think I'm going to get a chastity belt. <laughs> all right. So there's only one other question I asked. Why? What? How did this happen? From the arrest report, quote, Fidel then went back inside the closet where Maria was lying unconscious. Fidel then began to insert several times into Maria's vagina and anus without her consent. Fidel advised that Maria was so drunk that she was unable to resist. Fidel advised that he inserted a beer bottle, a flat iron for hair, and both his fist into her vagina and anus. At the same time? Yeah, at the same time. Fidel advised that his arm was inserted all the way up to his elbow. Fidel admitted that he inserted his fist and arm so violently inside Maria's vagina that she began to bleed. Fidel advised that he became a monster. Well, at least he knows. You put your arm in someone's vagina all the way up there. You bump the organs. But guess what? It's not like you just hit an unlock button and all of a sudden they just dump out. Okay, they're connected to other things in the body. All right, they don't fall out no matter how no, wide he it is or had whatever. To have punctured through. No, no, no. You have to pull out the organs. You have to pull it out. What happened is this: mm -mm. he is doing this hard with both the hair iron or hair flat iron a beer bottle and his arms up to his elbow in both the vagina and anus at one point the detective points to his elbow so you put your whole arm inside here she says she was having fun not like screaming in pain she was having fun and then he was pumping his arm and he happened to grab the intestine the, like, the lower intestine like, he, he grabbed he grabbed it like a tube ah. and then he just literally like i play mortal Kombat, and there is this character that pulls out someone's spinal cord and it's the fucking same thing he reaches into he reaches up into but, the vagina okay, and grabs okay. the fucking intestine and pulls it all out so, okay hang on though okay so anatomy here like there is a wall that had to have been punctured for him to do that well either a hair iron or a coat hanger could have worked the yes but absolutely. The, i'm just saying it's not like it's loosey-goosey up there because it's this where you know 
where where things happen with the children, you know, baby thing and, you know, the uterus. There's a uterine lining that would have had to have been punctured to get to those the stomach, intestines, etc. So she she was obviously dead in the closet. She never she never gained consciousness. In fact, here's what happened. But they like, were why both- was she in the closet? Was that where they were doing this? Or like it feels like he would have had to put her in there while he figured out. Well, here's his what happened. Story. No, here, no, here's what happened. She was found in the bathroom. They were having sex. She mentioned that she was going to go to Peru. He got really mad. That's why you see the destruction in the apartment. And then he goes back into the closet. She is naked. She her pants are pulled down. She is doggy style with her her ass up. And then he sees close by on the floor of the closet a beer bottle and a hair iron curler Mm -hmm. and some other things. And maybe he tried to wake her up something he puts his dick in her pussy is what he said that's the first thing that goes in there then the beer bottle then he grabs a hair iron now at this point she is unconscious she's not dead but she cannot consent to any of this and i doubt want someone's arm up to their elbow inside of them i doubt she is that type of person but somewhere in this drunken stupor his arm goes both inside the vagina and anus and then he grabs those intestines like uh, doing a pull-up grabbing the bar doing a pull-up he just just rips it out and it just tears every and it comes out the vagina just i mean think about the the fucking rage like you you're like so okay, and not. we got it we got it we got it so, and then you then you Stop. grab no we got it right. Hubble is my so, therapy dog right now um so what the fuck why he's not a monster sable had an excellent point was she pregnant like was he trying to abort potentially no that the is baby? a really good point they said she wasn't pregnant, but autopsy uh, was a great guess. The autopsy is not available. But why would the only last question I have right now is so her 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 innards were on the closet floor and then she died. Obviously, she so died. He drug her to the bathroom. He drug her to the bathroom. Didn't put water. I mean, all his story about putting water on her face. No, nah, none of that shit. He did wash his hands and go smoke a cigarette. He then came back in, and then that's when you hear two hours before him punching walls, and he's just in this fucking, ah! He finally calls 911, and he's trying to shake her. Now now it looks weird, doesn't it? Sir, is she still... They go into the bathroom. They haven't been in the closet yet. The med- the uh, EMTs. Baby, don't die. What? Wake up, baby. The medical examiner looks at her, and you know how autopsies work. You, you do an autopsy to they're get like, uh, inside the right. the organ, so you can look right. at them. And then they're so like, about, well, where is everything? Put yourself in the medical examiner's shoes. They don't even go in the closet yet. And then they're like, what the fuck? He's like, Where's what the, the fuck? Where is everything inside of her? Well, it's sitting in on the closet floor. And that, and that was actually sitting right here where you saw this. I don't want to see it. What do you mean you don't want to see it, Jen? You have to. Oh, wait. It's not... Uh, I don't have to. That's where you saw uh, where everything was kind of just the organs, like kind of like a big pile ish. So, but you guys haven't answered my last question. Why, why would you do this? Why would someone do this? Because he is a monster. Well, man, I can't believe no one guessed it. I mean, that there's a reason for this. Did he eat the tequila worm? Huh? Did he eat the tequila worm? The worm makes you do crazy things. (laughs) Shit, maybe. Shram said sounds like PCP. She calls him her ex-husband's name twice while they were having sex. That's the reason. So does it make sense now? I mean, no. <laughs> well, the the she did do that stuff, the bottle and stuff with her ex-husband, who she also called out his name while they were having sex. So, so he goes into a fucking I don't know. I've not never an seen excuse, this. Though. No, no. What the fuck? He ripped out her goddamn fucking organs and shit. Definitely not an excuse. I mean, not even close. It, if anything, it just makes him more of a monster. He disemboweled her. Like, we haven't even used that word in the 360 episodes we've done. He disemboweled her. Emboweled, yep. He disemboweled her. He pulled out her bowels. Dis, mm. remove, bowel inside. Bowels come out. Well, where did they come from? Inside. There's no, there's no cuts. You didn't open her up. Well, they came out of her vagina because she called him her ex husband's name it's the tequila <laughs> it'll make you angry Fuck. that's what I, I mean, was thinking too well like <laughs> um i don't think anything has ever made anyone that angry no though. not <laughs> that angry i'm just saying like so oh what do you guys God. think rough sex or murder yeah that's this Fuck. is 
this is murder. <laughs> but I mean, like there was, he had no other history of like anger. Like that's unheard of to have that reaction. You know what I mean? Like there was nothing else going on. I don't know. You know? No, there was nothing else going on. They were actually moving to a, I mean, they just moved into this apartment. They, you know, they were buying furniture. And then she mentioned she wants to go to Peru. And then she starts mentioning her other boyfriend or her ex-husband's name. And then, I mean, that's it. Hmm. I mean, Fidel Lopez kills girlfriend who screamed ex-husband's name during sex. So that is why he did it. But it's not like, oh, I'm going to choke you out because that's what I made it seem like when the cops got there. He choked her out. But you know how I'd like to do my cases, you know, and then you guys see, well, this is it's not murder. This is something else. like he fucking put his arm all the way up there and ripped her insides out. Please keep telling us that. Well, I'm just trying to let you guys know. What do you guys think of that? So does the blood make more sense now? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, you see, uh, and I didn't want to obviously show you some of the pictures because, you know, I, I wanted to um, wait, but. What was the sentence? Well, what do you think, baby? He'll be in jail. Look, look at this. I hope he is in jail forever. This is, this is the blood. <gasps> it, this is the closet. Holy um, shit. This is the blood in the closet. Do you see that? I'm oh, sorry, that is mama. my God. I never meant to hurt you. I never meant to make you cry. I mean, this is the, she was sitting right here. Out my closet. So the closet goes to the bedroom. You see the, his Nike shoes or whatever. Jeez. This is in the closet. This is the blood. Let me see if I can get a, a better wow. no. image of that. High, high def image of that. Let nope. <sighs> That's a fucking lot of blood. <laughs> wow. So who who's taking ownership for this one? It wasn't Darren. <laughs> Was it Lauren? She seems to know. Fucking Natasha's, Natasha's like, uh, I, don't, I ain't gonna say anything. Oh my God. Fucking nuts, eh? Jesus, fuck. I, and, and the whole time he's like, you know, I, I'm not a monster. No, you're you're <laughs> a monster. We're it's like, go. no matter what you say, dude, you are fucking terrible. What the fuck? Uh, I hope you guys like wow. that. Wow. Yeah, so that was uh, terrible. I uh, so I was going to do the Leonard Lake this weekend or this weekend, but uh, it's a big case, so I decided to go through the uh, case requests. And somebody requested this. I'll tell you who fucking requests this shit right now. Yeah, tell us. I mean, what the fuck? I don't know why y'all made trying us to sit through this. this? this? I mean, this it's us? not even y'all requested it. Like everyone else is like, oh, do this one. Yeah, that one looks crazy. So it's like, what the fuck? Now all everyone's like, I don't know what the fuck this is. I mean, it's hard to believe that he <laughs> wasn't also on some sort of drugs or something. To no, he wasn't. Just be tequila. able to do that. Like, just tequila. Sydney. Sydney, not Australia. Sydney, not Australia. This is what she... she uh... Ah, there we go, <laughs> Sydney. God who ripped out girlfriend's intestines. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At least you feel better about yourself that you did not come up with this one yourself. Monster is caged. Thug who ripped out his girlfriend's intestines when he, she said her ex-husband's name avoids death sentence by pleading guilty. Wow. I mean, like, what What else? It's not rough sex, man. No. You can find our podcast on any podcasting app, and we're at 370 episodes right now. We've been doing this for way too fucking long. You know, we love you guys, and good night, you lovely, lovely people. <laughs>